Hello. This is what wise women want here on Charlottesville CPA Comcast Channel 13. And we're here every week with incredible women on our panel talking about subjects that I hope you'll be interested in. Uh, today we're talking about something that I know very little about, uh, having homeschooled my children. We're going to be talking about nutrition in the public schools. And we have an incredible panel of women today. To my left, we have Erin Green. Erin is segment specialist K-12 for Affinity um, Group. To her left is Beth Morris, director of school nutrition for the Lynchburg City Schools. To her left is Andrea Early, director of school nutrition and vice president of the Virginia School Nutrition Association. And to her left is Amanda Warren, who's director of school nutrition for the Stanton School District. So ladies, um, what kinds of school nutrition, why is school nutrition important for children? Uh, anybody like to start? Go ahead, Andrea. All right. I'm starting? Okay, <laughs> sure. Ahead. Well, you know, in school nutrition programs, we are are starting with just meeting a basic need of our students. Um, so many students in our districts are coming to school, they're hungry, and we know that a hungry child can't learn. So uh, we are, are not only meeting that basic need, but trying to meet it with a high quality food, really get them nourished and get them ready to do all of that important work that they need to do during the school day. Okay, so what, what is high quality food? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me what high quality food means to you? Because yeah. that's like kind sure. of a nebulous It term. is, it is. So, yeah. so Beth, would you like to yeah. talk? What, mm -hmm. what's well, for us, um, you know, we have come a long way. I uh, started in school nutrition uh, almost 20 years ago. And um, what our um, program as a federal program, we are regulated by the United States Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And we must prescribe um, to the menu pattern um, that mm -hmm. USDA um, uh, gives us to work with. And within that, there are, um, just for the audience's um, education, there are five food components to every uh, school meal. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a protein, a grain, fruits, vegetables, and milk. Mm -hmm. And it is up to us as directors, mm -hmm. I know each one of us are, as well as being the directors of our program, are also what we call the meal planner. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at those five components and deciding what protein we are going mm -hmm. to serve, what grain. Mm -hmm. um, we're using many whole grains, if not all whole grains. Mm -hmm. um, we are using skim and 1% milk versus your whole, your, your whole milk, which has a greater fat content. Um, looking for clean label. Um, we just in Lynchburg um, this past year removed all dyes from mm -hmm. any food source. Wow. Um, right. Lower sodium and lower sugar content. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are the types of things and a lot mm -hmm. more fruits and vegetables that are fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully uh, when season allows to be locally sourced. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, do you, do you have yeah. a lot? Amanda, you work a yeah. lot with uh, the fresh and local mm -hmm. um, as far as sourcing fresh yeah. fruits right. and vegetables. Yeah, and it's, adding to Beth as far as you know that the quality meal, mm -hmm. um, some of the innovations that we did too is we removed artificial sweeteners mm -hmm. from all of our products. And I'm a newbie, I'm only five years into school <laughs> nutrition. Um, and so we removed mm -hmm. artificial sweeteners. Our next goal is dyes. Mm -hmm. um, so we're removing any artificial colors from mm -hmm. our food items. And then in addition to that, we re I require that mm -hmm. a fresh fruit and vegetables offered every day yeah. um, on our school yeah. lunch lines across the district. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, kids are taking them and they're mm -hmm. eating them, and um, we do a lot of work with exposing them with taste tests and mm -hmm. other kinds of edu nutrition education mm -hmm. components that we work within our cafeteria, like mm -hmm. Harvest of the Month programs, mm -hmm. um, because they're not going to eat it if if they don't know to try it. Right. right. And so that's an yeah. important component of what we do. And that was I was wondering mm -hmm. about that because I've experienced having placed mm -hmm. people in um, those. It, it, my clients uh, are autistic and I've placed mm -hmm. uh, some in the ca school cafeteria mm -hmm. to work. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've noticed that uh, there's some in locally here, fresh fruits and vegetables and things like mm -hmm. that, but the kids don't always 
you know, mm -hmm. at their homes, let's face it, you know, many of them are eating processed foods, right, you sure. know, out of the packages, mm -hmm. fr frozen foods and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And how do you get kids mm -hmm. to eat, you know, yeah. fruits and vegetables? Yeah. I mean, do you, what I would say of, that's yeah. our greatest challenge. It is a challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's not what the meals that mm -hmm. we're serving aren't necessarily replicated in any other mm -hmm. venue that our students are exposed to food. Right. right. Um, at home, mm -hmm. uh, at the nearby fast food mm -hmm. restaurant, grocery stores. Um, and uh, it was 2012 uh, when, with the change of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, mm -hmm. um, when the meal pattern changed and the shift toward um, fresh fruits and vegetables really came mm -hmm. to the forefront of our program. Mm -hmm. And so we're now in 2020, mm -hmm. so we've had eight years mm -hmm. of educating those kids. Uh, so your kindergartner coming in now, who's now mm -hmm. in perhaps seventh or eighth mm -hmm. grade, is familiar and right. it's more acceptable mm -hmm. um, than it was when we were really That's trying right. uh, at the beginning yeah. of um, you know, 2012. Uh, mm -hmm. It really was, uh, for many of mm -hmm. us, we saw lots mm -hmm. of participation decrease mm -hmm. because the kids were going, what is this? What I'm is not used this? to seeing this. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Um, so well, 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 what, what kinds of things well, do you do to, to educate them? I mean, yeah. you know, they're not getting it at home. So right. how, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do it. This, I mean, I know the school day is yeah. packaged with, you know, right. scheduling. How, how mm -hmm. do you promote, you know, eating healthy to the kids? Some Sometimes it, it is in the cafeteria. So it's taste test and presentation. Uh -huh. um, sometimes the way we present food, um, a, a great example is just when we tray, we say tray up fruits and vegetables, it looks beautiful. If I come into a cafeteria and I see like, it almost looks like a rainbow. Mm -hmm. So they'll pre-cut. So a kid is going to be much more likely to eat orange slices. Right. So, you know, we bought a machine right. that you can very, very quickly cut orange slices. Mm -hmm. And so you lay three or four orange slices out. Well, kids are going to take that. I mean, my own kids, if I cut it up and I put it on the island in the morning. Right. Like the strawberries don't magically, right. you know, just appear there. Like right. your mother did that, okay? Yeah, right. You're welcome, <laughs> right? But I mean, it's the same premise in school. So we'll have beautiful colors um, and, you know, just our staff too. You know, I always say to our staff, you are educators. Mm -hmm. You you are not just lunch ladies. You are educators. You are as much an educator as the person teaching math because you are teaching health. You are teaching wellness. So. Um, encouraging kids as they come through. And, you know, we had butternut squash last week. And so I said, you know, your messaging needs, there, there are gonna be the majority of kids who have not seen a butternut squash. Mm -hmm. So let's have a butternut squash that's cut in half on the line. Like this is a butternut squash. We diced it, we roasted it with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and it's delicious. And if you don't want a whole official half cup serving that we've put on the mm -hmm. menu. If you get another half a cup of fruit or vegetable, which is our requirement by USDA, which is a, I think a good one, you can try just a bite of butternut squash and you know, mm -hmm. how, how exciting. And you know, I think in, in an ideal situation where you have good volunteers and you have a lot of manpower, maybe you have a person out in the cafeteria who's given out stickers to butternut squash tasters, oh. you know, I mean, so you can kind of reinforce that now. Can that happen every single day? And probably not because mm -hmm. you maybe don't have enough volunteers right. or enough manpower. But I mean, those are the kind of things that, you know, just constant exposure, encouraging, um, and just being positive about it. And did I, did I understand you correctly mm -hmm. that somebody tries to get each one of them to have mm -hmm. the five food groups in, on their trays? Is that? Is that what you're saying to me? Because I, I, every yeah. school cafeteria I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, the kids make the choices right. about the things that they need, yeah. that they're going to eat for that day, and right. they don't necessarily they don't have, have to five. take all five. So we have. Well, especially those yeah. who are probably lactose intolerant from yeah. milk. So. Right. right. So we have the five components that Beth talked about, and so that is a full meal that you could take the full meal, but they have to have three of those five, and one has to be a fruit or vegetable okay. for it to be. And, a complete meal. Well, yeah. part of the uh, part of us being a part of, and I truly, truly know, mm -hmm. not just believe, but know we are an integral part of the educational mm -hmm. day. Um, at both school districts that I have um, directed, I require of the kindergartners and the, and we have some preschool mm -hmm. programs and the first grade that all five components 
are served every mm. day. Mm. Um, our program for the, uh, mm. the higher grades, it's called Offer Versus Serve, and that's right. what um, Andrea was talking mm. about. We, we offer all five of the components every day, but a child can refuse two of them. Mm -hmm. um, for my district, the kindergartners in the first grade don't get that choice because mm -hmm. I want them exposed. Mm -hmm. right. And it is in those early mm -hmm. ages that you are developing your um, your taste buds. habits mm -hmm. and your yeah. taste yeah. buds. And they mm -hmm. are more um, receptive. Mm -hmm. um, we just had a, uh, we're looking at our menus for next year, mm -hmm. and my staff came back in. One of the, we, we also have subgroups for vegetables that have yeah. to be offered every week. Right. And mm -hmm. one of them is legumes. Okay. And mm -hmm. we were had a manager, um, uh, Retreat, and we talked about everybody. Legumes said, or vegetables? Yes, the, okay. yes, dried yes. peas and legumes. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they were proteins. Mm -hmm. Okay, and well, they can we, be, we can count them as a protein, protein also. Yes, use, <laughs> I was going to say, wow, all these years as a vegetarian, yeah. I thought yeah, yeah, they were yeah. protein. Well, we, we can use count them, them as protein, them as a vegetable, mm -hmm. and that pinto bean, mm -hmm. it, it comes on everybody. We, you know, the kids don't like pinto beans. The mm -hmm. kids don't like pinto beans, but. The one manager at Hutchison Early Learning Center, mm -hmm. which is a dedicated preschool program, she spoke up and she said, my kids love the pinto yeah. beans. So and everybody's like, what do you do? At what that early right. age, uh -huh. we're hoping that that right. will build their, um, you know, their mm -hmm. receptiveness to these mm -hmm. um, items that they aren't necessarily yeah. seeing in other venues. Yeah. And I will say, even with the legumes, um, I, uh, in, in food sales, and I represent about 35 different K-12 um, specific. I was going to ask you what a segment specialist is. Right. <laughs> so um, uh, about K twelve, uh, about thirty five K twelve specific manufacturers. So mm -hmm. one of the companies I represent is Bushes. So mm -hmm. for example, they will offer free posters of Duke the dog, mm -hmm. and then you know just trying to promote uh, mm -hmm. just they're promoting their product, but at the same time, there is a lot of support within manufacturers, mm -hmm. such as Kellogg's or such as Dole mm -hmm. or things like that. Again, what do so, you? Do, what is a segment specialist? Yeah. So the segment would be K-12 as opposed to, um, uh, previously I sold to many restaurants, as you know, I've worked in many restaurants all my life. Um, but now I do know the regulations and I do uh, target these products to um, the food service directors and um, if I see something interesting, like for example, um, we have this beautiful uh, Chiabata cheese melt. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like a product that you would get from Panera, really. Mm -hmm. And so I go and I visit these ladies and mm -hmm. I show them this product. Um, and you know, for that product, just the, uh, the melt, you know, that would be a two grain and a two meat. So that would count for mm -hmm. four oh. components of the meal and it's, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. So, um, and they decide whether or not they like it. We do student right. testing, mm -hmm. which we just did. We just did yesterday, and they love and the geobotic the yeah. product. So then yes. I go back to my company, or mm -hmm. that company that produce, produces them, and then mm -hmm. I forecast and say this is how much they will probably mm -hmm. need for next year, and then we do bid pricing and things like mm -hmm. that. So that's where I come into that. But I do work with all the districts in Virginia and West Virginia. Um, Whew, that's a huge area. That's a very yes. large area and a lot of kids. Um, but and Aaron is is really in tune with kind of forward thinking in terms of, of meal planning. You know, we the reality in our business is that we have I think all three of our districts moved toward more scratch cooking. You know, yeah. school nutrition kind of went in this in this yeah. like loop. So you had you know the early years where. Uh, you know, staff is getting in whole turkeys and roasting them, and and then you know you went to like the 80s and 90s where like it was all processed yes. out yeah, of the cans, pizza. boxes, yeah. yeah. And Square so then pizza. we started to kind of the tide turned again toward more scratch and what we call flash scratch because you know the reality also is that we have a lot more students than there were years mm -hmm. ago. Um, for example, our high school has almost 2,000 kids. Mm. We have four lunch periods, and we have you know, two, two and a half hours to get lunch ready for 2,000 kids. Now, not, not all 2,000 are eating, but 1,300 are. So we're serving 1,300 lunches. We can't cook everything from scratch and have it ready. Right. I mean, that's the reality. So we do more of a flash, what we would say call flash scratch. So um, maybe Aaron sells a product that, you know, this part is, is kind of made, but we're gonna add fresh ingredients right. to it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can't do a pizza dough from scratch. Like we right. can't make our own pizza dough for that many kids and have it ready, but we'll buy, um, we'll look at a, a crust that doesn't have 
a lot of preservatives and it's whole grain and it doesn't have as much sodium and then we're going right. to top that mm -hmm. however we would like including maybe some local broccoli that mm -hmm. we chop up or um, we bought it. local organic chicken and we had some left and we shredded off the bone and Got we can it. top that so it allows us to do a fresh product and i know um, bo both of these ladies do similar <laughs> kinds of things you can yeah. speak to it but uh, we have this this issue of where we want our foods to be, but we also have to get it made. So mm -hmm. someone like Erin really helps us and she knows if she brings us something that is like way too overly processed and full of junk, I mean, I we, we're in the same, <laughs> she and I are in the same food buying right, co-op and are. we are like an open book. So I mean, they bring us something like, <laughs> yeah. no. you know, fish with colored sprinkles, we're like, Come on, yeah. Yeah. do you know us? Yeah. Like we're not well, serving that. But it's, it's interesting. I mean, throughout mm -hmm. the state, everything's, you know, our state of Virginia is just so very different mm -hmm. too. I mean, the idea, the main goal is to get food in these children's bellies. So there are some districts that maybe do not have the, um, the innovative um, directors but also may, maybe do not have the staff to be able to produce well, the Well, this product. is, I was gonna ask you yeah. about Dull staff facilities. and barking and right. having to do all mm -hmm. this fresh food. And, and mm -hmm. also, you know, some of the kids just have never been, ex you know, they yeah. live in food deserts. You know, right. Prince George mm -hmm. County is uh -huh. a food desert. Right. They've only seen mm -hmm. what is that family mm -hmm. dollar. Mm -hmm. Right. And trying, you know, so it's, you do, and they're not quite as concerned mm -hmm. as clean label and things mm -hmm. like that. They just really mm -hmm. want to get, and this, these are the only meals that these kids are eating. So right. they want to get mm -hmm. what the kids are going to like. So right. for like yeah. chicken corn dog nuggets is like mm -hmm. one of the biggest mm -hmm. sellers. Um, and, you know, for something like that, some of them are not clean label. Some, mm -hmm. but there are going to be 51% whole grain. They're going to be low sodium. Right. They're still meeting. So they're still meeting our guidelines. But, you know, they're, right. you know, it, the, but the main goal mm -hmm. is that we all have is right. to, you know, get the, get these children fed. Well, this must yeah, be a so. nightmare for you if they have to deal with no dyes and, mm -hmm. you know, um, well, synthetic ingredients yeah. and things like that as you're trying to get more and more. I organic think manufacturers and are manufa moving. When, when the change first mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. the regulations came out, the manufacturers had no idea okay. what they were going to do. So the yeah. food was not good. They right. did not know how to make 51% muffins that taste mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for example, now, we, you know, we're talking about Gee, the pizza. my son would say the same thing when we were eating. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, pizza, we were uh, you are mentioning, but like for um, my uh, Red Gold, who mm -hmm. produces tomato products, they have a nutritionally enhanced marinara sauce. So it, and it also has no high fructose corn syrup. It is low sodium. Mm -hmm. It is all these things. So there are products that are geared towards mm -hmm. K twelve. They also gear them towards healthcare as well. Mm -hmm. But um, so they, you know, the, the more the industry, the K twelve industry grows, mm -hmm. the more the manufacturers are realizing. They're gonna and some they're gonna sell and make money. Right. That's that what many it comes of our down students don't know, which many of our parents don't know, mm -hmm. even many of our people that work in the schools outside of school mm -hmm. nutrition don't know, is that the K twelve product mm -hmm. is a niche. Um, that Absolutely. that even that rice crispy treat that mm -hmm. we would be um, offering to the students as a little treat to go along with their meal. It's a whole grain mm -hmm. product with less sugar. That's, mm -hmm. That same product is manufactured by Kellogg's mm -hmm. for the general public, but they are manufacturing a separate product really? for K-12. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Really? And, mm -hmm. and so what Aaron's, the products that Aaron is showing us may not be out and available to the wow. general public. Wow, that mm -hmm. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. They are making all these yeah. healthy products for the schools People and not are, for the general public. We do the yeah. little um, sidekick slushies that kids mm -hmm. just go crazy for and they are uh, clean label and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it looks like an Italian ice to the child. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. even though it counts as half a fruit because it has no sugar added. It does wow. not have high fructose corn syrup and things like that. And actually they, I just found out yesterday at the meeting, they are coming out with a retail pack because they were wow. being approached so many times that mm -hmm. these kids love this product mm -hmm. and how can we get it? And it was only geared towards K-12, but now wow. they're gonna have it in a retail pack. So, so some of that is being things sneaky. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is being, yeah. <laughs> but the object is, Yeah, but this again, is, mm -hmm. I mean, because K2. I've seen the Rice crispy, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that, in my mind, I thought it was the same. Yeah. Yeah. So right. this is like yeah. an education for me right. with all the things that I, and the, you know, I didn't really go around looking at the cans, the labels, mm -hmm. you know, right. I just assumed that all those cans
cans had corn oh, syrup yeah. like everybody else's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. on, on the general market. I had no idea mm -hmm. they yeah. make special products just for the schools. This yeah. is Best fantastic. juices yeah. that are, have, mm -hmm. uh, 100% fruit juice. Well, no, the first vegetables ingredient is, is vegetable is juice. Vegetables, sweet mm -hmm. potatoes. Yeah. And oh, right. they don't know, right. but it's fun yeah. names, you know, like cherry smooth or, you know, right. little things like that. Wow. So it is a lot of... Why don't they wake up and sell this to the general public? <laughs> right. I, know. I, know. I don't understand yeah. this. I know. Then they wouldn't be charging too much for this. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> right. I but, but I go around looking for cereal, pa mm -hmm. packaged cereal now and again. I mean, mm -hmm. I hardly ever use that, but... And I can't find mm -hmm. anything that doesn't have some form of sugar in it, mm -hmm. corn syrup or otherwise, mm -hmm. cane sugar, whatever. And so, I mean, Sh mini uh, shredded wheat, you know, that's about it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have something mm -hmm. added. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Serious <laughs> challenge. Food size shredded right. wheat. <laughs> and, and, you know, some people are allergic to wheat, so yeah, they can't that's eat true. it. But anyway, that's true. So, yeah. so, how do you accommodate mm -hmm. all these? kids who have peanut allergies, mm -hmm. lactose intolerance, mm -hmm. shellfish allergies, mm -hmm. uh, allergies, those kinds of things. I mean, it must be, yeah. I was just, as you were talking, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about the women who are working in mm -hmm. the back, you mm -hmm. know, who have only a certain amount of time to get food prepared mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, having to make special foods. But I don't know that that happens. Yeah. You know, do those parents have mm -hmm. them bring their own food or do you, do you have to accommodate all those kids too? You know, it depends on the family. Um, some families just feel more comfortable packing, but we, we always say, if you would like your child to eat with us, we will figure something out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we maintain a very comprehensive list of ingredients and allergens. Um, it's on our website. So if you, we have kind of a, an interactive website. So if you hover over a food, you mm -hmm. can see what the main, you know, the, the top five right. um, allergens are. Now, if there's something really different you know you may have to contact our office to find out but you know the main soy and shellfish and, right. and wheat and dairy right. eggs um, and we have uh, and I believe most districts do this we have a, a point of sale software where we can key in the ingredient any kind of allergen so that if that child comes through and they have something on their plate that we know isn't allowed we can Move check that off something you know, right else. move them to something else take <laughs> right. that right um teachers so there's a whole comprehensive allergy plan starting with the teacher the school nurse so there's a lot of communication mm -hmm. um about the kids and then we will just not do certain menu items so at our elementary schools instead of doing peanut butter and jelly we do sun butter and jelly uh, uh, you know as an option okay. um just yeah. because so many kids eating peanut those. butter yeah. out in an open, we're not peanut free. Kids can pack peanut right. butter sandwiches right. in their own lunches. Um, but us having it as a menu choice, it's that's just a lot of peanut butter to deal with out yeah. <laughs> in an open space. Yeah. And and that's been acceptable to kids. They they mm -hmm. like the sun yeah. butter. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, fantastic. so there's all kinds of different things. Um, we don't serve a lot of shellfish. You know, you <laughs> um, soy is a challenge. You know, we have kids with soy allergies. Yeah. So yeah, because um, there's soy in virtually everything. Yeah. These days. Yes. So cane sugar, soy. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds yes. of things. So yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I know from my son being a chef that, mm -hmm. you know, having kids even in the proximity mm -hmm. of some of these yeah. um, will set off an mm -hmm. allergy. So, yeah. so that's, you know, really important not mm -hmm. to have those kinds of things available. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how parents do it today with all these, you know, children. <laughs> or, I mean, your job uh -huh. must be exponentially, be, because of the numbers of children mm -hmm. that you work with all the time, must be, you know, incredibly difficult. I have a question to ask slightly off topic because uh -huh. you're talking about all these things. What do you do with mm -hmm. the excess food at the end of the day? Yeah. What ha what happens to that's that? A, because I know there's question. oftentimes a mm -hmm. lot of food that's mm -hmm. and you I don't you can't use them you know second mm -hmm. time around and things like mm -hmm. that because you know it must be a challenge mathematical challenge to prepare for all these kids right. yeah. you know during the day and figure out how how many mm -hmm. things to prepare and all that. What do you do, you know, with the excess food? So um, we enrolled in the USDA Waste Challenge two years ago, mm -hmm. um, which gives you, you know, resources for how, how you do manage these waste mm -hmm. products. And some of the um, innovations that we did were created share tables or share mm -hmm. coolers in all of our schools. Um, so if a student does take that half cup of fruit or that half cup of vegetable that's required, mm -hmm. but they don't want to eat it, they can then put that on the share table and at any given time another student can come take that mm -hmm. food product. Really? Now we only accept, of course, shelf stable, wrapped, right. mm -hmm. you know, un, right, right. Un, 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 
You won't put that piece like, of pizza, we're not gonna in, put there. That piece of pizza right. in there. Right, right. Um, and then the other thing that we do locally is I have a partnership with mm -hmm. um, the Valley Mission, which is um, a wraparound service mm -hmm. um, organization. And if it's a product that we feel like we can't, um, you know, put back into our share mm -hmm. units, then we offer to donate those mm -hmm. to, wow, to that that's organization. One thing that, uh, and as far as waste that cannot be shared, um, one thing that Charlottesville and Albemarle County both partner with is the um, black bear composting, mm -hmm. as far as um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, the full waste. So that's something nice mm -hmm. that they're doing. So you all do composting too, as well as? Um, we do not do that. Not yet. We're yeah. working yeah. on a composting okay. program yeah. right we, now. That's a local, yes. that's one of the things that, mm -hmm. you know, your localities, mm -hmm. where the localities can yeah. support the districts, right. we have something available yeah. to us that someone has come up with. Yeah. You know, something may not be right. the, across the valley or down right. south that may have right. that. But that and we is did work with Black Bear at one mm -hmm. school, and yeah. then it just got a little tricky with their, their pickups right. and things. And it, right. It, we but you do do sustainable kinds of things, mm -hmm. environmentally mm -hmm. sustainable kinds of mm -hmm. things. Yes. I know that yeah. from having read, you know, mm -hmm. something. So what, tell mm -hmm. tell the audience what kinds of sustainable sure. things. Beth, do you? Do well, you? I'm, I'm very excited mm -hmm. that we have started, um, and it really was, thank you to my colleague over here that got <laughs> the, uh, the idea. Um, we are sourcing uh, milk from mm -hmm. a local dairy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Homestead Creamery, I have to put a shout out to wow. Homestead yes. Creamery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they deliver to four of our Delicious elementary schools. Yes, they do. <laughs> and when I mentioned Homestead Creamery, everybody was like, is it ice cream we're getting? Right. No, but yeah. it's really, really good milk. It's really, really good. <laughs> right. um, but um, uh, with that, um, we're using plastic glasses that mm -hmm. can be then washed mm -hmm. instead of all of those cartons, those eight, those eight ounce cartons that, you know, that go oh. in the milk boxes. So we're not throwing mm -hmm. all of that trash into our landfill. Mm -hmm. um, the kids are loving the milk. Yeah. Um, we're, ha we have a wonderful mm -hmm. partnership with uh, the dairy. Um, we're, um, uh, it's a great partnership mm -hmm. economically, and um, and the kids love it. Mm -hmm. And again, it yeah. is helping to um, uh, minimize the footprint uh, in our um, in our landfill. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because we we also have a milk machine at one of our two milk machines at one of our schools, and the kids can take what they want. So yep. as long as yep. they have. Yep enough other food on yes. their tray. Uh, if they don't want eight ounces of milk, they don't have to take it. And, right. and when we implemented our milk machines, we, had, we did a pre and post analysis and so much more of the milk that was taken was consumed. Mm -hmm. One, it's colder, um, you know, they want six ounces. Well, you know, the kindergartners yeah. maybe don't drink eight ounces right. of milk. Mm -hmm. right. you know, they're probably better with about four to six. So yeah. it, it really does help to reduce that component of food waste. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you, you're also, mm -hmm. as what I know is you're doing something about straws and plastic and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What, what were you doing? Yeah, so that's yeah. what, that's what mm -hmm. we did this year. We sort of wanted to tackle that, that plastic waste mm -hmm. in our schools, I feel like. Um, as a you know, as a food service operation, we're probably one of the largest mm -hmm. in our city, um, mm -hmm. and we have a huge responsibility as far as how we deal with trash and waste, mm -hmm. um, and how that you know affects our school community and mm -hmm. then our overall community. So the first thing we did was we um, eliminated the purchase of plastic straws, so we moved to paper straws, and in addition to that training um, students on not necessarily even needing to take that straw. Mm -hmm. You don't right. have to have a straw. Mm -hmm. um, one of the bigger, I think more impactful things that we did was with the fruits and vegetables, um, we did serve yourself fruits, mm -hmm. fruits and vegetable bars at all of our schools, including mm -hmm. three with salad bars. Mm -hmm. And that eliminated oh, wow. those single serve yeah. right. half cup mm -hmm. portion right. mm -hmm. um, cups that a lot of people feel like you need to do to make mm -hmm. sure that you've got right. that half cup portion mm -hmm. that the right. USDA meal mm -hmm. pattern requires. But if you just train the students properly on using, you know, those serving utensils that give them the right measurement, right. it works out fine. And a lot of people, you know, have trepidation about whether or not elementary school students can can handle a serve yourself bar. Well, we know they can. They can. Right. And I have pictures they of can. it. Um, right. And they yeah. do great with it. And they it. love it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They feel grown up. Probably. They, they do, feel very you know, grown up. And, and, and there's of, just more, mm -hmm. account, you know, there's that accountability mm -hmm. for, for them in making their own meal mm -hmm. choices mm -hmm. and. Um, it's just, it's exciting to see yeah. them scoop up salad on right. their own mm -hmm. because they get to make that mm -hmm. choice. Um, right. And then of course, to eliminate mm -hmm. those single yeah. um, serve plastic 
single yeah. use plastics. And foam trays, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Foam oh, trays, yeah. we got rid of. Foam has mm-hmm. been, um, yeah, and also foam has been eliminated in Charlottesville and Albemarle County. Oh, They're we've also eliminated them, too. Yeah. Um, you know, whoa, 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 foam trays? Yeah, like a disposable last tray. tray. You have, so a car- oh, compartment oh, tray. Oh, 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 oh got so it. So like a plastic, yeah. yeah. When you listen to the students, mm-hmm. you know, they're the ones saying, what can we do better? What can mm-hmm. we do differently? And we have a um, green team at our middle school mm-hmm. that has been really innovative mm-hmm. in, in thinking of different ways. Mm-hmm. They're excited about the changes that we made, but they want to, they want mm-hmm. more changes. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so we've been working closely with them to figure out some, some different strategies for mm-hmm. serving our meals without it's using plastics. Yeah. You're listening to the kids. Oh, yeah. You know, it's important. Exactly fantastic. There are yes. customers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, but people absolutely. don't really think of them as right. customers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's generally mm-hmm. we impose things on our children rather mm-hmm. than listening to them. Yeah. So this is absolutely fantastic. Yes. Do you find it difficult? Um, I don't know what the federal regulations mm-hmm. are or, you know, you talked about different federal programs and things like that. So I was thinking like um, uh, Michelle Obama's, mm-hmm. uh, um, I forgot what that was, uh, when she did um, the government program. The for the and the Hungry Healthy Kids Act. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That what, was kind of all of the sweeping changes that Beth spoke about. So that was, you know, it was the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, mm-hmm. but 2012 was the year that you started to see red orange vegetables and legumes and dark green mm-hmm. and, and you know up to that point it was pretty easy to serve french fries as the vegetable every day mm-hmm. you know um, and so now you had this new and you and white bread and just you know and, and that's what it was and so years before that we made a decision to start to introduce more mm-hmm. whole grains so this is my 18th school year so i've been doing this a little bit um not as long as you i don't <laughs> think right how I think long i have one or you two one more on me? okay okay i thought we were close but i remember before that became the law saying hey you guys you know what we're let's do grilled cheese on whole wheat bread and they were like what have you lost yeah, your mind? Crazy. Like kids are gonna, I'm like, you know what? I think it's coming down the pike and really honestly, it's the right thing to do. So let's just try it and see how it goes. And so some of those changes we, we had made in Harrisonburg before it was you know, official. So for us, it wasn't that much of a change because mm-hmm. we, had, we had done these things kind of knowing that we're, we were, it was gonna happen. Right. It's the right thing to do. So let's, let's do them, them slowly. But um, yeah, that whole Michelle Obama's, it got very political. That was the yeah, first time that I think yeah. any of us saw <clears throat> yeah. school lunch be political, right? Because right, right. before that you would think this is kind of a bipartisan thing, right, right, feed right. kids, right? Everybody should agree mm-hmm. that that's a good thing. And then right. this became, because it was something that the first lady was interested in improving. And so you know, most of us thought, well, that's a good thing, like to make it better. But because it was a lot really fast, I think it was it was a challenge mm-hmm. and, and it took time. But I feel like we've gotten there. I think I kids could. are, I mean, school lunch does not look anything like it looked prior to, to implementing those guidelines. And even with mm-hmm. some of the guidelines, you know, now it's been politicized with some mm-hmm. of the guideline changes. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm finding mm-hmm. that most of the districts are not yeah. changing what they've yeah. done. I was they've about gotten, to yeah. ask you. They've yeah. gotten right. here and the kids are right. accepting it and yeah. kids are liking it. Yeah. And it's the, you know, it is yeah. the right thing right. to do. Right. I, I was about to ask you mm-hmm. because I know oftentimes schools are the, the political pawns yeah. of every uh-huh. new administration. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was mm-hmm. wondering how you, you know, I know this is another extreme um, mm-hmm. administration and mm-hmm. how that was affecting, mm-hmm. you know, going into Michelle's program, but now we have another extreme um, administration and how the school districts are handling. I don't know what's coming down the pike now, but, um, you know, are there new legislation again? For well, I don't look at yeah. any of this administration's um, proposals or yeah. changes as there's some proposed a, as, as rescinding mm-hmm. anything that we are, yeah. are okay. currently doing okay. right um, what know. what um, it has done is give mm-hmm. flexibility mm-hmm. to and and I actually mm-hmm. as a director mm-hmm. um, I I appreciate it mm-hmm. I appreciate mm-hmm. being given the um, the 
the ability to make decisions mm -hmm. locally mm -hmm. for my children, mm -hmm. because what my children in Lynchburg City mm -hmm. may be receptive to is not going to mm -hmm. look at all like what the kids yeah, in true. Stanton or Harrisonburg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that cookie cutter approach, it really was, I think, a challenge yeah. across mm -hmm. the state of Virginia, across the United That's States. It. And um, again, I don't, I don't see it as having taken anything mm -hmm. back. Um, we're still moving mm -hmm. ahead, uh, yeah. but it has given me mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the as the professional knowing my children and knowing my customers mm -hmm. as to how best can I accommodate them within the mm -hmm. um, USDA requirements. So that was, so the initial requirement from Michelle was mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, a shock system to the mm -hmm. system, you know, in transforming mm -hmm. everything. And mm -hmm. now things have loosened up a little bit for districts. Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying that that's a good thing. And I, you know, in general, you know, Things come on high right. from for school districts all over the place as mm -hmm. if everybody is the same all the right. time, right. you know, and legislation gets passed for the whole mm -hmm. country, which is really absurd in terms right. of economics mm -hmm. or culture or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's really a good yeah. thing to hear. I'm, you know, it's really yeah. nice to hear that. Yeah, I, I agree with what Beth's saying. And again, you know, it was just this like second wave of, of this getting so politicized, right. you know, and, and really, um, you know, I tend to not look at it so much as like this administration did that or this administration does this. It's the agency of USDA in this particular case, sort of listening to some of the ongoing concerns of school nutrition directors about waste and, uh, you know, about different things and saying, okay, how do we maintain these good standards mm -hmm. that, that have, that really made school nutrition so much better, but this this piece is a little bit tough. So how can we adjust that just a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, yeah. If if you don't want to, you don't have to. If right. it, if it's working where you are, that's fine. If it doesn't, um, just as but, long as the standards are high. Yeah, the standards yeah. are still high, and yeah. I and I feel good about that too. And right. so you know, I don't think it honestly matters what political team you're on. You have to right. know the inside out of, of a topic and you know when I would read articles recently about you know the the Trump administration is gutting school lunch I'm like ah oh, they're no. they're really not <laughs> right. you know and, and that again is, that's yeah. politics right, right. it is it's yes. politics right. and it's just and um, the schools get caught yeah. up in the middle yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so I you know I did an, an interview with our local news and I said our goal is going to be to keep moving forward right Right. Regardless of what happens, what's proposed, we are going to keep moving in a positive direction mm -hmm. and 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 appreciate the and, flexibility. Uh, yeah, appreciate flexibility yes. yeah. where we might need it. If we don't need it, that's fine. So, so um, historically, uh, mm -hmm. school nutrition has been uh, an industry basically run by women. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that you talk about it, you know, moving forward and all that mm -hmm. as, as women. Why, why do you suppose it's been historic? Men haven't infiltrated, you know, the, the school nutrition market. We won't let them. <laughs> 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 Great answer. Yeah. Great yeah. answer. Okay, we now someone with a serious. We do. Right? We do. We do. Exactly. Yes. 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 Um, start to our program, which was started in the 1940s, um, where were, who was in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, who yeah. is traditionally mm -hmm. the um, one that designs and prepares mm -hmm. and right. feeds the children? Right. So mm -hmm. I think that that really has been uh, historically mm -hmm. um, the, uh, you know, the, the woman's role, but mm -hmm. I think we have taken on the challenge um, and and the yes. expansion of our program mm -hmm. beyond what's in the kitchen. Right. Um, you know, many of us uh, with with uh, programs that mm -hmm. uh, we're feeding kids in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. We're feeding kids supper now after mm -hmm. the traditional school day. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with our local um, uh, cooperative extension to mm -hmm. have farmers markets in the summer where parents can come um, and while their children are eating and pick up um, uh, you know, local, local mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. produce to take home with recipes of how to produce it. Mm -hmm. So our program has 
um, you know, moved away from just the kitchen and the cafeteria mm -hmm. to places that we never thought mm -hmm. we would be going 18 years ago. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We've got to go. The mobile. Oh, oh yes. talk about the cafe. mobile cafe. Yes. Yes. Okay. What's so, the mobile cafe? So we um, in Harrisonburg have uh, renovated. It used to be a library bookmobile, and it, it ended up just sitting behind the library um, <laughs> during the recession. Didn't have additional funding, so uh, we purchased it and we turned it into our mobile cafe. So, kids, we we gutted it. We put in um, almost like a serving line. So kids actually come in one door, they come down a serving line, they get their meal and they go out. And so we use that to uh, feed kids in neighborhoods around Harrisonburg in the summer. So eight weeks oh. out of the summer, Monday through Friday, we go around um, to eight stops and it's no cost. It's through the USDA Summer Food Service Program. So free to all kids up to 18. And then wow. we use it during winter break and spring break. So we wow. just, I was actually um, texting today with our driver and saying, do you think you can drive on the 7th and 9th <laughs> of um, April? She's like, sure. So we have a good time. So we're actually um, hoping to expand that um, this summer with a second vehicle to meet, to reach more sites. So what what is your like mm -hmm. poverty level in your areas? Is it high? Yeah. Is it low? Yeah. What is it? Lynchburg has mm -hmm. a very high mm -hmm. um, percentage of disadvantaged children mm -hmm. and actually all but two, we, we have 20 feeding sites, um, 17 traditional um, K-12 schools, and then three alternative ed programs. And all but two of them operate under the federal program, the Community mm -hmm. Eligibility Program, which because of the high percentage mm -hmm. of students that are enrolled in those uh, at those school sites, all children eat their meals for free, mm -hmm. regardless of the individual family's um, wow. eligibility yeah. for, mm -hmm. for free meals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and and that you know, is a it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to feed all mm -hmm. the children uh, for yes. free, but so, it also is a great responsibility because you do mm -hmm. recognize that for many of those mm -hmm. children that are coming to school, yeah. they're coming to school first and foremost for a safe environment mm -hmm. and for again meeting the, yeah. that that exactly. essential need mm -hmm. of like Maslow's hierarchy, yes, right. um, meeting uh, the those basic mm -hmm. needs that you and I take. For granted, for granted. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so uh, yes. Lynchburg. So, are you serving these kids breakfast, lunch, and dinner? At, at eight of our mm -hmm. schools, we are serving dinner as well. Wow! And one thing I noticed, you know, um, like in Henry County, for example, I was showing them, um, you know, uh, meal packs with like lasagna, and then it has carrots and this and that, and. Um, Marcy was like, we can't because a lot of these kids don't have electricity, nor do they have stoves to be able to heat this in. Whoa. So it has to be shelf-stable meals. So when we talk also mm -hmm. about the nutrition aspect, it has to be logical and doable mm -hmm. for the right. children because the most important thing in the end right. is, is that they, that they eat it. Mm -hmm. right. And so yeah. what happens mm -hmm. to these children in the summertime when there's no school? We open our school locations during our weeks of summer school, and so kids uh, who attend summer school receive breakfast and lunch, and we also, anybody, any other kids can come in, but what we realized when we started our mobile cafe three years ago is that transportation, if, if you're not getting right. a bus to right. summer school, you're <laughs> probably not going to come to that site. We have a few right. kids who will maybe walk to sites in, in more walkable neighborhoods, uh, but our schools that are are sort of further Rural. out. Yeah, the they're, yeah. yeah, so we we take meals to the kids. So we looked at, you know, where in Harrisonburg do we have highest density of kids in well, neighborhoods? And that's where we go. Well, I would say you're, all your areas mm -hmm. are really uh, m mm -hmm. mostly rural. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. you know, we have the U shape mm -hmm. in, in the Virginia where, mm -hmm. you know, we have only concentrated areas mm -hmm. of population. Mm -hmm. But the majority of our state is, you know, rural and mm -hmm. pro probably poor in poverty. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these it's, this is incredible that these children are getting mm -hmm. amazingly, you know, that you all have the foresight to be able mm -hmm. to do all this incredibly mm -hmm. nutritious food for these children mm -hmm. who probably would not mm -hmm. um, have that opportunity, you know, in their own homes. Mm -hmm. And we all know what the benefits are of having good nutrition mm -hmm. in terms of school performance. Have you um, done anything in terms of looking at those statistics mm -hmm. in your schools for, you know, the kinds mm -hmm. of programs that you're offering with this whole food and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, school performance? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
We, go, 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 it's go. okay. You go. <laughs> well, I, know, I mean, we're, you know, re, when we participate mm -hmm. in, um, for instance, like breakfast, breakfast expansion programs, mm -hmm. breakfast in the classroom, or providing um, alternate locations for kids to access breakfast more readily, we do have to report on that at the mm -hmm. end of the year. And those reports mm -hmm. do come from the administrative you know, departments of the schools, their front office. So we're getting um, data on discipline, on nurses visits, oh. on, um, you know, other things that um, we know that when kids eat, it's, it impacts that. And we right. have seen mm -hmm. a lessening of nurse visits, mm -hmm. discipline, tardiness, mm -hmm. things along mm -hmm. that line. Right. How about how about school grades and things of that nature? Mm -hmm. Test scores up. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were going to say something? Uh, well, yeah, you made me think about a different rabbit hole to go down, and that's oh, yeah, the um, alternative <laughs> meal delivery. So yeah. you, know, you can have all these programs. You can, you can say, we operate this, this, and this. But if they're not accessible to kids, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to eat. So right. school breakfast was one that for years and years, we did school breakfast one way. We opened in the morning, and we put the breakfast out on the serving line. And if you wanted breakfast, you came to the cafeteria and you ate it. They came through the line, they got their breakfast, right. and they went to class. Right. And this was well, before this, school started. This, this was, was before right, the right, first right, day. Right, right, right. And we didn't serve that many breakfasts that way. Um, there, really? there is There are a multitude of reasons why kids might not come to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Um, one, there may be a stigma. It doesn't take kids right. a long time to right. figure out who's coming in the morning for breakfast. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they might not be hungry because they're just rolling out of bed. Right. Um, they may be running late. <laughs> they uh, Older kids are in the halls talking to friends, and, right? Yeah. Younger and, ones are yeah. afraid. Yes, yeah. and so uh, we do things that help to encourage kids to eat breakfast. So at our middle schools and our high schools, we do open first thing, but then we open again after what we call breakfast after first block. And ah. at our high school, we serve like mm -hmm. 400 kids first thing and another 500 at, after first oh. block. Yeah, more kids mm -hmm. come to that one than the first one. And in mm -hmm. elementary schools, we don't even serve in the cafeteria. We pack coolers for every classroom and kids start the day eating together. And we went from like 30% wow. of our kids eating breakfast to almost 90. Wow. So, I mean, it's just that change yeah. is you ladies incredible. Are, I mean, you, you have not just nutrition degrees, but psychology degrees too. You're <laughs> going to be able to figure I out. I actually do. She does have a psychology <laughs> degree. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're looking at behaviors and, you know, right. you, you mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, environmentalists. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've it's got a holistic approach. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. But it's so mm -hmm. unique because you know it's not just looking at one thing; it's mm -hmm. looking at a majority of things. Mm -hmm. Well, with mm -hmm. with social media and technology, does that have any impact on on school nutrition programs? Goodness, sure. yes. I wish it was all yeah. positive. I know. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's not good impact. Okay, but. okay. So let's hear about <laughs> this. Yeah. yeah. I, it has potential to be very positive, it does. right? Uh, particularly when you are the delivery deliverer of the message, right? <laughs> yeah. And so we we are very careful. I'm super careful about what goes out. Like I want it to look good, you know. And I'll say to managers, okay, do a tray, take a picture. Um, remember, like don't don't put a plastic fork on there. We're trying to move away from plastic forks. Makes the whole thing look ugly, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so, right. um, so so we we sort of of uh, really. I think monitor what goes out, but you can't control what maybe a kid tweets right. or. Um, so you allow yeah. the kids to tweet. Well, in terms of, we well, we, so we can't really <laughs> tell can't. them not to. Right, right. You know, have have kids have that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you know, and so there has been some unfortunate post, um, you know, from. Uh, Thankfully, not not in my district. I don't know about <laughs> no, you guys, but, but it could happen to any yeah, one of us, kind of right? Where a kid maybe takes video, yeah takes something and puts it on their tray and says, "This is all I got for lunch today," and uh, and, and, and it goes out tray. there, yeah. the half eaten <laughs> tray, right? And and it's easy to see that and think, oh, "This is what school lunch looks like." And you're saying, "No, it really doesn't. It can look like this. They didn't take all their components. <laughs> you know, they they could have taken so much more." Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, the manufacturing mm -hmm. industry. I mean, there can be, you know. Um, you know, there can be mishaps mm -hmm. with, you know, maybe one oh, corn dog yeah, yeah, nugget yeah, yeah, yeah. out of 10,000, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and then one kid gets it and he's the one with the cell phone and he takes uh -huh. a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, right. you, know, you mean they allow a little cell phones bit off. in school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. right. So, but then that's when, like, they will contact mm -hmm. me and then we will issue, you know, like, I'll get my those companies to issue a letter and stuff like that. So, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah, yeah the, the yeah. social media is interesting. Uh, well, well it, <laughs> I just think with all social media platforms, you know, the story isn't always 
fully told. Mm. Yeah. And, exactly. and and so if if well, that's kind of why I asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if a school nutrition program has the opportunity to have their own mm -hmm. Facebook page, which I do, that or their own awesome. social media platform. Oh, tell me you also you, manage your social media. I do. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. there anything you women don't do? <laughs> right. Sleep. Yeah. There's that. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> but if you know, if you're in control of the story from the beginning right. and your your mm -hmm. message is positive, then right. you you know, you create sort of that um, insulation around yourself um, where it's a little more difficult if, if mm -hmm. someone does want to, you know, create some sort of negative social media, um, you know, post or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you already have told your story mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you keep it positive and you keep it real. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important if school nutrition programs can have the ability within their district to, mm -hmm. to have a social media platform, they should mm -hmm. because it, it, right. it helps you counter all of the negative social mm -hmm. media stories that are out there, mm -hmm. all the ugly school lunch stories. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've all seen the, the countries um, of oh, right. school lunch. Oh, school and lunches yeah. from school other lunch countries. From other countries yeah. and how yeah. Yeah. amazing they are. And then there's uh -huh. always the, the chicken nugget and the uh -huh. ugly applesauce and the half spilled right. milk on the right. Well, know, that, the that was States my trend. concept uh -huh. as well. So, you know, yeah. from looking at all the social media and mm -hmm. things like that. So it doesn't surprise me that, you know, and it's great that you keep up on, on these things, yeah. you know, and, and are able to control it a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't even control my Facebook page half the time <laughs> because I'm working all day, yeah. you know, and I can't figure mm -hmm. out who's posting. And I'm, you know, I end up, you know, I'm deleting sure. 2,000 people because there's, you know, <laughs> all their crazy posts. And not only, I mean, with the social media, I mean, I, you know, know mothers who do pack, but mm -hmm. um, as far as like, because of all the social uh, or the negative um, connotations, but um, one thing with the school food is that, you know, it's temperature regulated. Mm -hmm. It is you know, safe food mm -hmm. as opposed yeah, to yeah. a lot of meals that yeah, I would get packed. Say it's, it's the safest food it's the, yeah. out there in the biggest yeah. restaurant. Right. Yeah, we are like, mm -hmm. very careful. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. as much as social media for us, because mm -hmm. I, do, I do not, but we, we do partner with our mm -hmm. um, communications department mm -hmm. um, to come into our schools whenever we have a right. new initiative right. or we are having mm -hmm. a special event. Mm -hmm. But it's been a very success story for Lynchburg um, in partnering with other um, community leaders to get those champions, mm -hmm. um, get the uh, the chief Absolutely. of police mm -hmm. to come and serve lunch, yes. get the fire chief to come serve lunch, have mm -hmm. the mayor in your, mm -hmm. in your in mm -hmm. your um, in your cafeteria, mm -hmm. so that when they're yeah. going back out, Absolutely. and those people and um, the public mm -hmm. that they impact, mm -hmm. they are speaking positively mm -hmm. about your program. Right. Yeah, you've got to have champions. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. It is an uphill image battle mm -hmm. because one of, one of those ugly school lunch okay. images, yeah. people get that in their head. It and takes a lot it. of of positive it images to undo. Yeah, yeah yes. it does. And and we really believe in having just the champions in the school. So our teachers, our principals, you know. And I I tell my staff all the time the best way you can market our program is just to be nice, like to be mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. and uh, you know it. Yes, we beautiful food sells the food, but so does a smile and a, and just being warm and kind to children because yeah. they really need that, that will too. Them <laughs> them they exactly. need that too. Yeah. That exactly. Mm -hmm. If you're happy yes. and you know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, you know, ladies, I must say that I have learned a tremendous amount here today. I absolutely can't believe it. Um, and I want to introduce you all again so people mm -hmm. can contact you or whatever mm -hmm. in your, you know, they'll know who you are from our okay. posting on our, our page. But um, to my left is Erin Green. She's a segment specialist, K-12 with Affinity. And to her left is Beth Morris, Director of School Nutrition for the Lynchburg City Schools. And then to her left is Andrea Early, mm -hmm. Director of School Nutrition and Vice President of the Virginia School Nutrition Association. And to her left is Amanda Warren, Director, the School Nutrition Stanton School District. And, you know, ladies, I, I really appreciate this education today sure. because I'm one of those people, you know, who has had this image in my head of, you know, the fried chicken and, you know, the, the chicken nuggets and all those kinds and things out of the can and all that. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time. I, you've come a long way and we're in Charlottesville, Virginia yeah. here. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. your time today. And if you'd like to see um, 
our uh, this show. Um, you can go to What Wise Women Want, and remember, wise is spelled with a Z, whatwisewomenwant.com. For this show and all of our shows, it's also, remember, on Charlottesville CPA channel, Comcast channel 13, um, and it's shown four times a week. And you can find out those times on our website, whatwisewomenwant.com. And I neglect always to say who I am. I'm Dr. Daria Brzezinski. <laughs> And um, we're here every week. And, you know, I really want to um, say thank you to um, these women for not just the time they are spending here to be with us today, but also for all the incredible work that they do. When I started reading about all the things these women do, I was just absolutely amazed at, um, you know, their time, their energy, their concern for children. And, you know, I think we have oftentimes a negative um, attitude about nutritionists and school programs and school nutrition programs. And I really wanted to let my audience know that, you know, there are tons of positive things mm -hmm. happening in school nutrition programs. And um, it's not all canned foods anymore. It may be in some places, but it's not everywhere. So, um, you know, please find out in your own school district what's yes. going on and yeah. um, encourage them to make the changes that a lot of these women have made in their school districts. And um, I encourage you to go find out. You know whether or not um, they're environmentally friendly or you know have no dyes or sugars or anything like that in their uh, in your school districts and so again thank you sure. ever so much ladies i truly appreciate it and thank again you. you can go thank to you. Yeah. Um, www what wise women want wise is spelled with a z.com thank you